thanks so much for stopping by the channel and checking out this new video. Before we go any further, make sure you hit the bell to make sure that you get reminders and updates on any new content that I create, because my mission here with uh, these videos and this channel is to provide you with the information that will empower you, enable you, educate you to be a profitable voice over talent. Well, one of the biggest uh, challenges, I think, to voiceover and to anything really is getting started. And to quote the lyric from Do Re Mi, Julie Andrews, The Sound of Music, let's start at the beginning. It's a very good place to start. So where is the beginning for voiceover? If you're just getting started, there are three places that I suggest getting started. So let me name those three places. We'll talk about them briefly. And then I'll talk about how to do that. But before we do that, I want to mention that if we're having this conversation maybe 15, 20, 25 years ago, it would be a completely different conversation because the advice would be, well, if you want to start, you get a coach, you get a pro demo, and then you get an agent. Because prior to the advancement in technology as we know it today, with all of the capabilities of our computers and internet and equipment at home studios, you really had to, you had to go through gatekeepers, unions and agencies, but that's not the case today. So I, I preface all of this by saying the way we do things now is quite a bit different from the way that it used to be. So the next time you hear the advice, well, get a coach, get a demo, get an agent, that's not the full story. I'm not saying you shouldn't do those things, but it's not the first thing that I would recommend to do right out of the gate because now there are so many more opportunities to get started at an entry level in voiceover. So let's talk about those. And the thing that I want to mention to you before I talk to you about these three platforms is what you should do before you start diving into uh, platforms. And that is you, you do need a demo to represent what you're capable of. But, and here's the big caveat, and the big but is this, it's a little different now than it used to be. It used to be you really needed to start off with a pro demo because the only way to get work, for the most part, was to get work through agencies. And to, to get to those gatekeepers, it was, it was a much smaller pool of people, much more competitive, and you needed a pro demo to do that. Today, you can do it with a DIY demo. And I've, I've created a video for you to show you and tell you how to do that. So click the link and check out that video when you get a chance. And the great thing about a DIY demo is that it's not static, it's dynamic. You can, if you're doing it yourself, you're not hiring somebody else to do it for you, you can do it again and again and again. And I always encourage my newer students to re-record their DIY demo. And when I say re-record, I'm not talking about going out and finding new scripts. I'm saying you can work with the same scripts, but re-record it at least once a week for the first six to eight weeks, because during that time, you will see improvement happen pretty rapidly. And you want to make sure that you're always showing the best representation of yourself. So with that being said, what are these three platforms that are best, in my opinion, when you're getting started in voiceover? And there are many places, many ways to get voiceover work. But if you're just jumping into it today where, and I've got my DIY demo, where do I set up shop? Well, the first place that I would go is Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. Why Fiverr.com? Well, a couple of reasons. Uh, one is that Fiverr has a very broad range of client types, people who are looking for voices, voice seekers, uh, as it were. And when I say a broad range, I mean everything from those who are looking for uh, people to voice national ads and major corporate uh, Fortune 500 type of projects where the budgets are big. And I, I know from, you know from experience, I've been on several years, and I have worked with the big budget clients, and they are there. But also, there's a lot of smaller concerns and companies and mom and pop type organizations who don't have the bigger budgets, and it wouldn't make sense for them to spend the big dollars on voiceover because the return on their investment wouldn't justify that. So what I'm trying to say is more entry-level type of jobs. And you've got those two extremes and everything in between. So regardless of your experience level, and you may be coming into this with no experience whatsoever, and that's fine because this is a great platform to get started because you can work with more entry-level type of clients. Whereas if you've done this for a while, 
Uh, like for me, you know, I've done this full time for 15 years. And so because of that, and if you have the experience and the credentials and the credits, you can also, you can cultivate uh, a different group of clients. They're going to pay you more. And the great thing is that even if you're starting, you can always graduate yourself and work your way up the ladder of voiceover success. So when you set up on Fiverr, you will need a demo or demos and you'll be setting up, it's, it's called a gig. And so, uh, I'm not going into a, an in-depth tutorial. As a matter of fact, my daughter is in the process as I record this of recording a four week class. So there's a lot of information and you can certainly do a, a deep dive. And as a matter of fact, we'll put a link to that class here in the uh, description of this video in case this is something you want to dive into deeper, but you'll need to set up your gig, meaning your profile. Uh, and there uh, you'll need to upload a, a graphic to represent your gig. It might be a headshot. It might be something that you have hire somebody on Fiverr to do for you and to describe your gig, to give the proper keywords and to upload your demos. The great thing about Fiverr is it's not an audition platform. If you've ever fished, imagine this, there's a couple of ways to fish. There's an, you can actively fish and you can passively fish. Actively fishing is where you're casting and you're working the lure. You're constantly, you know, casting it out, reeling it in, casting it out, reeling it in, you know, working it. Whereas passive fishing, and I remember as a kid going out with my dad, we, we would do some active fishing, but while we were doing that, we would have several poles where we would just have a bobber and a hook with a worm on the end. We'd throw it out in the water and let it sit passively. And we would watch for that bobber to move while we were actively fishing. And Fiverr is more of a passive platform where you set your bait, i.e. your demos, your, your gig, your graphics, your keywords, your, the explanation uh, of, of your gig, and you wait for somebody to bite on that. And now and when they bite, you may want to provide them a sample recording of something, a project they're looking to hire for. But the point is, it's not a platform where you get on and you do 10, 20, 30 auditions a day. You wait for those to come to you. And as you prove yourself on the platform, meaning you deliver great customer service, you do a great job, Fiverr will begin to open the gates more and more in terms of sending traffic to you. And the, so another great thing about Fiverr is really what I just explained. They send traffic to you. You don't pay to be on the platform. It's a free platform, which is a huge bonus. They take 20% of whatever you make, like an agency fee, but they're driving traffic to you. They do the advertising. They even advertise during this past Super Bowl. You may have seen that. So they're a large company with deep pockets and they have the funding and the resources to be able to do that. So that's, that's option number one. Option number two would be a website called acx.com, three letters, acx, audiocreativeexchange.com, owned by Amazon, created as a way to bring talent such as you and me uh, together with publishers and authors to get audiobook work and you can set up an account on there again it's free to do that and you can audition for books and anytime that i've logged in and looked on audible there's usually around a thousand to fifteen hundred books that are up for audition and all sorts of genres everything imaginable um now again that can vary sometimes it may be less sometimes it may be more but my point being that there tends to be uh, you know a plentiful number of books to audition for so I would certainly recommend setting up an account on acx.com. And they also have, they have a lot of videos on the website to explain the audiobook business, to explain their platform and how you can set up, set yourself up for success. And another great thing about audiobooks is you can create a DIY audiobook demo by recording several samples from several books and upload, you know, in your own home studio and uploading it to the platform. So that's another thing that, that I would recommend. Uh, the third thing is another freelance website, which is called Upwork.com. I do not have an account on Upwork, but yet I promote it. Why is that? Well, I promote it because a number of my students have been very successful on Upwork. A lot of what I do in my teaching, and yes, I talk about specific platforms and such, but I teach my students the, the basic tenets, the principles of marketing, because if you understand marketing, 
you'll understand how, how to take that and use that creatively to find ways to be successful, meaning finding various platforms and strategies that you can develop on your own. But there, there are these platforms like Upwork and other freelance websites, which frankly, I just don't have time to be on every single platform that's out there. I have cultivated a number of marketing channels uh, in which I allows me to be a very successful voiceover talent. I'm not interested in trying to set up an account on every new platform that comes along because frankly, I don't need to. However, if you're newer or you're stalled out in your career, I would certainly look it up work because uh, my students have found it fairly simple to work with, uh, no cost to be on Upwork. And I've had a number of students who are very profitable by being on Upwork. Now, keep in mind, when I talk marketing, a lot of people mistakenly think that I'm talking about their backyard, their market, where they live. And I've had people all throughout my career uh, and I've recently, I don't live in the Chicago area any longer, but I did up until a few months ago. And people would frequently say, well, how's the market in Chicago? To which I respond, I don't know. I don't work as a Chicago talent. Now, that being said, I've got plenty of clients that I've worked for that are in Chicago. But my point is this, I operate as a global talent. You should operate as a global talent. It's the work is plentiful, not just in the U.S., or in Canada, but literally all over the world. I've got clients in South America, Australia, China, Japan, Russia, Eastern Europe, a lot in Western Europe, the UK and France and, um, and Germany, uh, Denmark, a lot in Denmark. Uh, the point being, it's almost as easy to get work for uh, if you're a, a well, I, I can only speak as a North American uh, English speaking voice, but the demand for language is broad, not just in that market, but around the world. And, and as you do some searching on the internet, you will find various websites and platforms that uh, like to build rosters of talent of various languages uh, so that you can be available uh, to be marketed to those in different countries. So don't think, point being, don't think, well, I can only, you know, if I live in name the town, you know, if you're in Dallas, well, I need to market to Dallas companies. No, I mean, you certainly can, but it's no more advantageous to you than to market yourself in Denver, Colorado, or Columbus, Ohio, or in Germany, or in Australia. And I think, I think you get the point. And it's hard for us to think that way. We're not accustomed to, but technology has changed things to where it's nearly as easy to market outside of the U.S. as it is to market in the U.S. So cast a very broad net. And the great thing about it is this, you will never run out of prospective clients. Never, 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 because there are tens of thousands of content producing companies and individuals all over the world. And there are new ones coming online all the time. And there are new employees shifting through these companies. So when somebody doesn't need you today, it doesn't mean they won't need you tomorrow or next month or next year. So you will never run out of opportunities, but it begins by setting up shop on a few platforms where you know you can create some traction and some success, so which is why I highly recommend getting set up on Fiverr and on Upwork and on ACX.com. From there, you can get the traction that you need to be successful. Thanks for stopping by and checking out the video. I really want to encourage you, invite you to, to look in the resources section, which is uh, in the description of this video, and you'll find more about resources that I use and that I recommend. And a big shout out and thanks to my friends at Whisper Room, who have been making sure that I deliver consistently high quality audio in a very quiet and well-treated space for about a dozen years now. So big thanks to them. And a big thanks to you for stopping by and uh, make sure you subscribe and uh, stay up to date on all the latest content. And I look forward to talking to you again very soon.